Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the common type system, which is the CTS. We should note that there are three important components of the .NET framework. The first one is the CLR. Now CLR stands for Common Language Runtime. Then we are having the CTS, which is the Common Type System. And the third one we are having is the FCL, which is the Framework Class Library. Now CLR perform all the operation, just like executing the program with the help of JIT compiler and monitoring the complete program. If any problem comes, then debug it. So this is the part of CLR. CTS is for the types. Now what is the meaning of type? The type refers to the data type which are supported by the languages. So let's say we are having your integer, float, double. So these are the data types. So these are commonly called the type. Now we should understand that what is the meaning of common type system or the CTS. If you talk about the main functionality of .NET, we know that the code is interoperable. Now we know that let's say there are multiple languages which are supported by the .NET. Let's say this is the first language which is the VB.NET. Then further we are having another language let's say c -sharp .NET. Or maybe there is another language, let's say J sharp. There are multiple, but I am taking three of them. We know that there is a compiler which is going to compile that, and afterward it is converted to the intermediate language. So now this is the intermediate language. We know that VB is having their own compiler, C sharp is having the own compiler, and similarly J sharp is having their own compiler. So in the .NET, there are different different compilers for the different different languages and they compile to the intermediate language which is very much secure. Now with the help of CLR, this intermediate language is then again compiled and we know that who compile it, which is the JIT compiler, which is the just in time compiler and that compile it to the native code or the machine code. We know that native code run on the operating system. Now, this is the complete way the .NET work. Out of this, we should understand that what is the meaning of this CTS or common type system. We know that if we are writing the code in VB.NET, we can run into the c .NET because whenever we are converting this code of VB and compile it to the IL, now through this IL, we can just take this code back into the C sharp as well because we know that every code it is VB, C sharp or J sharp that is compiled to the intermediate language and this intermediate language is somewhere a common. So that means every language which is supported by the .NET should be having some common type system because you should understand that if I am converting the code of VB into C sharp and both are using the different different ways to code so somewhere there should be similar type of data types so that we can convert let's say if i'm taking the example of me and you whatever i am doing you can also do that means we both are compatible that means our mindset is compatible similar way we are saying that vb.net and csharp.net similar code can work that means their data types are same data type means integer float so how they are declared means their functioning is same so who is taking care of that it is the common type system which is the cts so that's why we can say that common type system is taking care of all the data types or we can say that cts provide common type system for all the languages because of this common type, one language code can be converted to the another code. So this is totally care by the CTS. That's why this CTS is the important component of the .NET. CTS also support the object oriented concept. Means we should know that this common type system is totally using object oriented programming. So that means the complete data types which we are taking into the .NET in any of the language. Now their type is same and they all work on the object oriented programming concept. So these are the main features of the common type system. Now we are learning the applications of CTS.
so if you talk about the first feature of cts then it is the language integration the word integrate means combining together means whenever we are combining two things together then this is called the integration so similar way if we are combining two languages together this is called the language integration and why we can combine two languages you know that the code of vb and code of c sharp both can be combined together because that is compatible that's how we can combine them so we can say that code of one language can be inherited by the code of other language so if we are having the one code in c sharp dot net then we can use that code into the vb dot net and how we can use it because these are two languages but these are two languages but their types are same and who is providing that type it is the common type system cts is providing so because of this cts the two languages can be integrated and because of that we can give the better performance better performance because whenever we are taking any of the code and convert it to any other language inside the dot net so it is giving more performance we can easily utilize the code and it is also more safe so that's how we can say that it is type safe type safety is the important feature of dot net and which is provided by the common type system cts now type safety means because dot net says that there is a common type for all you cannot use your own type so it is having the restriction that's why there is a type safety you has to go with the guidelines of dot net and there will be the type safety that's why the types are safe which types data types so data types are safe here so data types are only as a centralized controlled from the cts so these are the applications of cts now we are learning that what are the major types which are supported so there are two main types which are supported we know that there are two types of way by which we can pass the data one is the pass by value and second one is the pass by reference so these are the two types which are supported mainly so we can say that the first one is the value type we know that whenever we are calling a function or we are passing the data from the value then in that case only value is passed let's say if i am only giving you the value if i am having a variable now that value if i am giving so let's say i am assuming here so we have declared one variable i now it is let's say declared into the memory this is the integer variable now inside that we are having some value let's say 30 now if i am going to pass this 30 to you i am saying the value of i is 30 so i am passing the value so here we can say that the value is passed now whenever we are passing the values of such type now here the memory is allocated from the stack so we should know one thing whenever we are using the pass by value method at that time the stack is going to function and the memory is allocated onto the stack now the next type which is supported is the reference type we know that in the c also we are having the pass by reference pass by reference means whenever we are passing the address then it is called the reference so let's say if we talk about the same variable now this variable is let's say stored at the memory which is 501 so this 501 is the memory address so we should know that this 30 of i is nothing but the value so if we talk about what is the value of i it is 30 now what is 501 it is nothing but the memory address so whenever we are passing the memory address that is called the reference type so we can say that here memory address is passed whenever we are talking about the memory addresses now such type of storage is into the heap so now we should understand that there are two main types which are supported by the dot net cts that is value type and second one is the reference type now if we talk about the comparison between the value and the reference then in the value we pass the value and if we talk about the reference here we pass the memory address and if we talk about the value 
such type of memory allocated onto the stack and if you pass the memory then it is allocated to the heap so we should understand that these are the differences between the pass by value and the pass by reference method in the value the copy is passed that means whenever we are passing this value let's say we are passing this 30 now its copy will be passed to you if i am having the value 30 i am giving you that value 30 if you are modifying it that will not be reflected to me so if you are making 30 to 50 my value will be remain 30 so in the value we are only passing the copy and if you talk about the memory address if we are passing the memory then what is going to happen if you are changing it it will also be reflected to me as well so these are the two ways or the two types which are supported by the cts now we are learning the very important part of cts which is called the cls that is the common language specification first of all we should understand that this cls which we say the common language specification this is the sub part of cts so we can say that if this one is the cls means whatever the task it is performing now this is the part of cts which is the common type system so here in the common type system we also include the cls so we can say cls is the subset of cts we know that in the dotnet language as interoperable and that is because of the cts now which feature of cts is providing that task that is the cls so that means code written in the cls is compliant with code written in other languages so if you are writing a code in any other language and here in that language we are using the cls capability then code written with the help of cls will be changed to any other language that's why it is mentioning that code written in cls is compliant with other languages so wherever you are using the cls now that code can be easily convertible to the other languages so this is the benefit and because of that the languages are interoperable now this cls defines some guidelines so we can say that it describes the guidelines for dotnet language means in the dotnet if you are using any of the language like vb.net c sharp dotnet j sharp dotnet now their guidelines are given by the cls so cls provide that these are the guidelines you have to follow so that this code can be reusable to any other code so this is only because of the cls we can say that this cls compile the code in il so this can be executed by the clr so whenever we are writing the code in any of the language let's say c sharp j sharp or vb now that code is converted to the intermediate language now this task is also done by the cls because cls take care whenever the code is converted from the normal code to the intermediate language it should be compatible and so that it can be work on any other language which is supported by the dotnet so here we have learned that cts cts provide the common type system by which we can use the data types in all the languages and these languages are interoperable and who is going to help cts in attaining that this is the cls that's why cls is the subset of cts so that is all about the common type system